Is there a place after earth, but before heaven to deal with unsolved sins? So I guess this is asking, is there a place when people die after earth, but before they go to heaven where they have to deal with unsolved sins? Right? Yeah, and the way the, the way the question is framed makes it seem like a believer is asking it, right? Because yeah. they're expecting to go to heaven. And so I think that's important to, to outline there. I think we should cover it from both standpoints. Mm-hmm. So one, if you're a believer, the short answer is no. There is nowhere to deal with unsolved sins. Well, why? Because what happened to your sin when you became a believer, all that sin was put on Christ. And so when Christ when Christ died on the cross, the sin that was placed on him, it wasn't a sin up until a certain point in my life where, okay, you know, the sin up until 2024, Jesus took care of, but everything after that's going to have to be solved in between, you know, death and heaven, something like that. So past, present, future sins for all believers were placed on Christ and he paid the the full payment for those. That's why he's not having to continually off, offer sacrifices. Paul talks about it in Romans where he paid he paid the payment for sin once for all. There's not a there's not a continual sacrifice going on. He was the perfect sacrifice as Hebrews talks about. And so for believers, Paul talks about this in Romans 2, well there's there's no condemnation now for believers. There's now therefore no condemnation. And so it's easy for us to see that. I'm like, oh, okay, well, then I don't have to worry about my sin. But Paul talks about that, too, in Romans. He's literally expecting that question mm-hmm. in Romans 6, I believe. Yeah, Romans 6, where he says, well, should we go on sinning that grace may abound? He says, depending on our translation, it's basically absolutely not. Where it's, no, we can absolutely not do that. Well, why? Because the very sin nature that we had before, or the, not the sin nature that we had, but we were dead to our sins before Christ, and now through salvation, we are no longer dead to our sins. We have the, we have the ability to overcome sin through Christ. And so his, the question is redundant in the way where it's like, why would, you wouldn't want to do that if you're a true believer because that's not your nature anymore. You have a new heart. You have a new identity. You're a new creation. And so that's kind of the next logical thing where it's like, oh, well, then can I just keep sinning? Well, no, absolutely not. That's not your nature anymore. You absolutely should not be doing that. Uh, but then that also raises the question of, what happens after I die? Because I keep hearing about this thing called the judgment seat. So for believers, all of us will sit before the judgment seat. What is that judgment seat? Is that where we're being judged based upon our sins? Well, it's it's pretty clear in um, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5, where that judgment seat is where basically our rewards are being determined for how we lived our life. Because remember Romans 5... Romans 8, Romans 8, 1, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So that judgment seat is not a place of condemnation for any sin, uh, for anything, oh, well, you know, you did this, and Jesus didn't quite cover that, so we're going to have to deal with that now. No, the judgment seat is based upon how did you steward what God gave you, um, and the rewards or the crowns that we have in heaven are based upon how we lived our life there, um, or how we lived our life on earth. And so that judgment seat is, is determining rewards, not... Um, punishment for sin. Yeah, and I think what we need to understand is that there's the great white throne of judgment. That's where sinners will go stand. But yeah. I think, though, when you hear the word judgment, it's never in a good sense. But I, I love how you frame that. It's it's good judgments. Yeah. Whereas sinners stand before the great white throne of judgment, which there's nothing good coming out of that. And would you want to speak to when those happen? Like, how? what do we know about when those happen? Right, so, I mean, this gets into how you understand the end times. So this is going to happen... Uh, literally after the end of the millennium, Jesus has come back. He's done all that. Then that's when those who are raptured and then everyone else who will have to stand, everyone will stand before Christ, whether you stand before the great white throne of judgment or the judgment seat. Uh, that's the two different items there. So that's going to happen right at the end. So uh, both of those happen at the same time at the end. Right. Okay. Um, now, the other thing, too, though, that I think this question is asking is, and I'm reading into this a bit, so you correct me, almost like a type of purgatory. Uh, mm. I think this was probably maybe where this person's coming from is like what Roman Catholics believe is that they go into this place of holding, if you will, and then mm-hmm. you on earth that's still alive, you can still be making, I don't know, alms or penance for getting them out of purgatory. But I like what you said. Well, and I think even to clarify this purgatory mindset is, well, what happens after we die? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so there's no... There's no middle buffer ground in there where it's like, oh, well, you're here for a while until the rapture happens or until Christ comes back. No, your soul is immediately with the Lord as soon as you die, mm-hmm. if you're in Christ. 
I think though too, and I don't want to get too too into the weeds with this, is that um, there is a place of death that is almost like a holding place until they're finally cast into hell. Um, and I think the the picture of Lazarus and the rich man is a is a good uh, viewing on that. But when that happens again, that comes at the end when Satan's cast into hell. All of those will then leave that place of death, stand before Christ. Then they also too will be cast into hell for all eternity. Yeah. Well, and as you've kind of already unpacked some of that, so we've answered the question thus far for believers. You know, believers are, there is no place for unsolved sins because there is no such thing as an unsolved sin for believers. Mm -hmm. But if you flip the coin, what does this mean for unbelievers? Those who are outside of Christ, literally all of eternity is spent paying the punishment for all of their unsolved sins because how is sin solved? It's solved through the person and work of Christ. And so if a person rejects that person and work, then they have rejected the only solution they had to, to the solving of their sins. And so they now pay the punishment for that in hell uh, because their sins were never solved. So now they're, they're having to pay that punishment and having to, having to be under that judgment for that rejection. Yeah, and I think, too, it almost asks or answers the question that someone might ask is, well, after death, is there still an opportunity for people to come to know Christ? And you kind of answer that, no. Yeah. Once you're, that's it, that's it. Uh, there's no do-overs. So whatever you're doing now and decision you make now uh, or giving your sins to Christ and repenting, it's either he pays it or you pay it. But once you're at that point, there's no do-overs. Yeah. 